So, for his accessories, and technically I should have had this on him already, but the first thing we look at is his backpack. It has all the colors in there, like the dark green and this bluish green or aqua green. I'm going to call it aqua green. There's nice color separation. I'm pretty sure if this was a Master Grade, there would be like gray or black pieces in here. But up here in the front, there's color separation. Three colors. You got the gray, you got the red, and you got the blue. It's nice that they use a lot, um, they use parts for color separation like that. On the back, you have his thrusters that move. I want to say, no, it wasn't this, it was the other one I built that was giving me a little trouble building, but this one, it was quite simple to build. These, you had the cannons that rotate. And they actually swivel a bit here at the t at the base here, and these are just pegged in like so. And these and this just plugs in right on his back, which gives him, which now has his back, the back of his head covered by this damn thing. And now he's got his cannons and he's armed and loaded. Now his cannons, they're armed. He's ready to fire. And I've also forgot because in the show, well, these two are cannons, and I believe they're not like the cannons that the Freedom has on his wings. Because uh, this one here, the cannon here on his chest is similar to the one that the Freedom's, or the one like the Strike Freedom has on his chest. These two cannons are... I know they're like high energy cannons but the beams they shoot are green they're not blue not like that they're not like that red blue and white beam but these are green beams this one is that high power beam next up is his shield and with the uh, it has moving parts on it these cannons here in the front move up and down they are together though, so it's one piece together. Because in the show, these beams that shoot from the shield were yellow. So I'm pretty sure it had its own little compact energy reactor somewhere stored inside. Most likely, either I would suggest it would be somewhere in the middle or up here at the top. It has a connector here at the top. This rotates around. So you can make this either hand, so if you wanted to, yeah, you could switch this around. But normally this part here, since it's going to be left-handed, rotate this backwards so it can peg into his arm. This handle goes up and down and it slides up and down on this track. I wanted to say this part was supposed to rotate, but... I think at most you just have to peg it and unpeg it if you want to switch hands. Honestly, I haven't had him hold this with the shield attached to him, so I just peg it in like so, and I can't believe I did that without looking. But yeah, pegs in into the slot right there that's on his arm. And now he has a shield ready to defend against attacks, but also can use it as a weapon. Pretty nice, though, of offensive shield, too. One of the few Gundams that actually has a shield that is offensive. I know this is one. I know the IWSP's uh, shield is also an offensive shield. Because I think they call it the combined shield because it has the Gatling gun and the beam boomerang on it. Infinite Justice Shield is an offensive shield with the uh, the beam sword in it as well as the um, well beam sword. It's a beam boomerang that can be a beam sword, but it also has the uh, the anchor claw on it. I'm trying to think. Anybody else have an offensive shield that they used? I'm not counting Unicorn because that's just the Gatling guns attached to it. Oh, I can't think of nobody else, really. Well, I guess the Death Scythe shield was also a, a shield that also had offensive purpose. And 
Uh, the Blitz, because I think that counted as a shield. as That was a shield as well, so, yeah. Yeah, so, a few mobile suits that actually has offensive shields. And then we get on to his primary weapon before I get off track. His Bazooka. Quite long, a lot of parts. Few color separation parts here and there. Like the gray here, and the gray here with the red sticker on it. Kind of hard to try to do this because the camera gets in the way. And you got a little red sticker inside there that it shows. There's opportunities for panel lining. There's not many parts that make up this, but also the handle does move. And you can hold this in many ways. I'm going to turn his cannons upwards. Because uh, these cannons technically, they could go, if this backpack wasn't on, it can go 360. Now, there is a couple of ways you can hold this. You could kind of make them hold this like normal, like, uh, things over the shoulder. Normal bazookas over the shoulder. Yeah, and this hand is the one they tell you to use for this. So you can hold it like this, but just be mindful. If you get it in there, it's probably not going to hold well. But like I said, you have a movable handle. And... It helps sometimes, but honestly, it's just there for show because you kind of don't need the movable handle. But yeah, if you put it in, in like this, he can hold it. Just be mindful that just touching him is going to make this thing slide off because it's no real way of holding it unless you turn his hand up and you support it. It doesn't get too much in the way because you can still go, you can still hold it and shoot. But the thing is, if he was doing this, he would have to be cannons down. He could still go full blown, I'm going to shoot everything. Ah! And just be like, yeah. Or try to shoot everything in his sights. Because technically this would be like uh, him shooting something like two uppers, one a little bit lower, and then this wherever. So, oops. <laughs> so he could do something like Freedom's Full Burst, but uh, if he's doing it like this, it kind of doesn't work at all. Unless he's not using this and he's just like, well, I'm just going to play it safe and just over shoulder it. Which I want to say, this is how he used it in the anime. He would have been like, huh. Over the shoulder shot. Psh. Over the shoulder, boom. This, you know, boom, 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 boom. I know I'm being silly right now. Please forgive me. But yeah, I feel like this is kind of like how he would have done it. But technically, the better way to have him hold this is under the arm. Surprisingly, the under the arm method works a lot better for him. Because it gives him more clearance and this actually holds up a lot better. And like I said, it's not hard to do this because you don't even have to take off the fingers. Just squeeze this in there. Well, sandwich it in there. Run this through under the arms. And boom. He has his shield. I mean, he has his bazooka. Yes, it's going to cause some issues because now it's there. But at least he's holding it. And technically, him holding it kind of like that. If he was launching, probably wouldn't be an issue. So yeah, he could probably launch like this. Let's see. Soon the launch position and yeah I mean it wouldn't be bad because the back is actually kind of you know kind of lining up and tagging along to the his cannons on the back but yeah he can launch like this. 
I don't see how, I don't know if this will be a, a great way for him to launch though. But yeah, also if I remember correctly, even though I think he's a heavier of the three Gundams from the Alliance, Earth Alliance, on a later half of Gundam Seed, he is the slowest. He's the powerful one, but he's slower. All of them has that kind of cannon on them. And they all use trans phase shift armor, which is the new norm for Gundam Seed second series Gundams. It means that for him, trans phase shift armor means their phase shift, they're always like this. They don't phase shift down or anything. This means that while this is on, it's kind of like perma on until they run low on battery power. But uh, basically he never phase shifts down, this color stays on. And it doesn't activate, the trans phase shift doesn't activate until they actually take a hit or something. So technically, if he blocks, as long as he keep blocking with his shield, it's. I don't think it would activate. But the moment he actually kind of takes a hit, then the trans phase shift will activate on him. Or unless he takes a big enough hit, then yeah, it's just like good fight, good night. But there is one pose you can recreate with this because I do remember seeing this. You can recreate him in. And like the seed that in Gundam Seed where he was riding the col the column, the raider, while taking a knee. You can recreate this. So yeah, you can recreate it like right if it was like riding the raider and taking a knee. Because uh, he actually does this pose really well. I'm not sure if I did the right leg down or not. But yeah. Him taking a knee. Just like. Ah! But yeah. That's the Calamity. It's a great kit. I like it. Glad to get it. I'll probably end up grabbing the other two later. So I can have them to the collection. <gasps> For the price is worth it. I mean, I got him, I think, because it's an RE100, so it's another Master Grade. I paid about, and I'm not sure how well the price was for this, but I paid about $60 for this. I think it was like upper 50s, lower 60s for this. So, yeah, for what it's worth and what I paid, uh, I like it. It's worth it. Doesn't need as much work or coloring to do the job, but it does its job really well. Which means we might see in more versions of this in the RE100 line. Or somebody might kit bash it to make one, but yeah. This is the uh, Calamity. Hope you like it. Sorry I haven't done a review in a while, but I got a few more I'm going to be doing. And hope you'll enjoy this one. And the rest, so laters. Hey guys, Liger Zero JPS here, and today we're going to be looking at the RE1100 Calamity Gundam from the Gundam Sea Uh, yeah, so this is my first RE100, and of all the RE100s, uh, yeah, I figured I get this one first. Um, there is, it is something, actually, the build actually goes by pretty quick, and I mean really quick. And uh, if you want to see this, if you want to know or see the size of the box for this, because uh, when I saw the box, it was really small. And the box is like the size of a smaller Master Grade. Uh, yeah, that's the size of the box. Which, uh, I like the art, and I'm waiting for uh, that one to come out, because we already have the Raider that's out. Which is, uh, yeah, it's hanging right there inside the box. But yeah, compared to this thing in that box, yeah, he it's not that big, and nor does it come with that much. But yeah. Also, because I was looking up some stuff on this, uh, there's actually another RE100 of this coming out called the Ale Calamity, which. It changes the show. It leaves the base body, gives it a different color scheme, which is like gray, 
like gray, black, and red. Uh, the shoulders are different. It gives it a different backpack. And it gives it a different weapon. It actually looks really nice. I'm thinking about buying it. And it's only going to be like... From remember what I've seen, it's like $62. And it's like... Uh, it's pre-orders now because it doesn't ship out till the later on the year. Now, since this is a RE100, um, it is different from the you know master grades. They give it like a RE, they give it like a 1100 high grade. Well, technically, a RE, well, 1100 high grade is kind of. They give it like a real grade a little bit, or it's kind of hard to describe because this is my first one. The hands on this are like the current Master Grades we have. Um, now the body, uh, the legs, you have like mostly an inner frame. You don't have a full inner frame on the legs, nor the arms. Well, normally Master Grades you have like full inner frames on the arms. Unless they're like the older ones where they couldn't engineer that. Like um, the old Zeta and Double Zeta Master Grades. Where they didn't have full inner frames. Uh, there is no opening cockpit on this, so yeah. So I guess you could call this like a, a 1 to 100 high grade, if you want to call it that. Now, on the, the color scheme is typical calamity, because I wasn't sure, so I had to look it up, and this piece always pops out. Uh, so. The colors here are accurate to what it is in the show and all the line arts and everything. So you have the just darker green, like a forest green. Oh, I'm sorry, the lighting is catching it. So you get this like darker green here, kind of like a forest green. It is darker than what it appears. Kind of shows up better on the feet. You have the gray, which is part of the inner frame and everything. Like uh, the joints and... uh everything else and I also believe this also works part of for parts that's like inner frame too uh, you have this like aqua green this is like the bluish green aqua green kind of color you also have a little bit of red only in like three spots here the chest cannon and um, under, underneath his eyes you have a little bit of a uh, red there and that's like the bare minimum of red pieces you'll see. And you also have yellow, which is predominantly you can see all over, like on the knees, the chest, the shoulders, and the V-fin. On his uh, shield, there's some yellow. And also, there is, I want to say, and there's only one piece of this, is one piece of black. And it is behind this yellow on his uh, chest as you can see and look and there's a lot of detail in there they etched that detail in there and I like it you can panel on this there are spots for panel on it I did not panel on this but uh, yeah it is something it is a nice kit overall it it looks nice it stands up well it's like and if you're wondering which gun to see model this kind of based off of what frame would have been using Technically, this would be using the R, uh, the GAT X100 frame because this is a X100 frame model, and technically, off story history, this is based off the Buster Gundam. But yeah, it's a it's a nice kit. Um, now, for stickers, it doesn't come with a lot, which is really nice. Um, the only stickers up here are the eyes, which is one. Uh, the front camera, which is another. The back camera. Mruh. Mruh. And the red one on his bazooka, which is right there. So, yeah, it's not a lot. So, it's very simple and down to. Uh, very simple and clean with stickers. Now, if this was in a Master Grade. This engineering on the body would be something the same they did with the the GAT X100 series. So if you built a, the Strike Remaster, the Duel, or the Buster, then building this body would be pretty similar to that. Just different um, parts here and there. Arms would be somewhat similar. Legs, maybe, but slightly altered. 
And then maybe the backpack would be compatible with the uh, other one since it's an X100. So this means his backpack would be compatible used to the other ones. But since we won't see a 1 to 100 Master Grade version of this, uh, yeah, no changing the backpacks around. Uh, oh, and one more thing. All the parts in the box actually got used. There was only one extra part, uh, technically two. There was one extra hand, which is the same as the other hand here, which is a trigger hand. So if you want to put the bazooka in his other hand, you could do so. And the other part was an inner part here for like a face. But yes, so other than that, you don't have that many parts. So like uh, a lot of kind of, you know how certain master grades now they do where, where I think some of the high grades, I don't know, I haven't built a high grade in years, but like where this chin is, it'll usually be connected to like another part, which is like the base for like the eyes and part of the heads in a framework design. Yeah, there was another one of those. So technically I used every part and only had one extra part left over. So for RE100 like this, that's pretty good. And that does really well. So for articulation, the head goes up and down. Now it won't go down too much because it well it goes on a little up and down a little bit. Even if I push it forward or back, because it has the it has that forward and back motion. But the way his head is and how far and how his head is built, like, like if it's not the head that's gonna hit it, it's the chin that's gonna hit um, hit something. And the thing is, if you push forward, you can go down. You got up and down. If you push back, you get it, but you don't get that much of the uh, up and down. Plus, the back of his head, for how big it is, it's going to hit, um, it's going to hit on um, the back. Sorry, I can't speak today. The arms... They can swivel out really far. Yes, you can literally swivel them out from the body, which is pretty good. It's not bad. I like, I like kind of like that though. They rotate. They are 360. The shoulders can go up, and the arms go up that far, so parallel to the body. These thrusters in the shoulder do move, and they do move, supposed to move enough to get out the way, but just enough. Arms rotate 360. And he is double jointed. He has a double jointed elbow. You can get the full bend. Sometimes I worry because I want his, I think his, um, this flap here is going to get in the way. And these flaps do open up so. If you need an extra clearance space, which I don't think you would, you have that. Yeah, this this part for some reason does not want to stay in. Wrist are ball jointed. As you can see. This is a simple thing. It's nothing complicated. <coughs> Ball jointed wrist that doesn't move. You got a ball jointed thumb like a lot of RE100s would have and Master Grades. At least to keep uh, one finger ball jointed, which is usually the thumb. And these are like those style hands where you just swap them out for different hands. And like I said, the only other pair for the left hand is a trigger hand like this. Or is it the other way around? But I believe it's another trigger hand. Uh, let me check. Uh, let me check right now because I don't want to be like, guide you wrong. So, uh, here's what I'm in the box. So, here's the extra part here. This is the head. And like I said, this is where it has the chin and then you built around the face on this. You got your action base adapter. And this is the oh no, it's not a trigger hand, so I was wrong. It's another left it's another right hand, so if you don't want it to have the uh the holding hand, you can uh switch it out. But even though they tell you to use the uh trigger hand. 
and I know some people care about all this or don't care. You get a slot of sticker decal. You get a slot of, you know, peel off di uh, stickers to put on. And this is the, uh, as you can see right there, it says X, X131, because he's an X100 frame, which means it's a general purpose type uh, Gundam. X100s are general purpose types, even though Buster was a range, it's a artillery type, so he should have been a 200, probably. Uh, 200 series are the special equipment type, which is where the X252 Calamity comes in, and the X207 Blitz, and I think it's 300, because it's X307 Raider. And I think X three hundred three uh, Aegis are transformable. So those are the uh, code numbers, if I'm not mistaken. That first digit of the hundred series tells you what its purpose is or where it belongs. One hundred is your general purpose. Two hundred is special equipment, and three hundred is the uh, transforming types. So back to where I was. I covered the uh, head and the shoulders and the arms. The body, it rotates 360. I think it's a, whoops. Yeah, it's on a peg, so it's a peg joint. Now this is, so you see this, this is basically like a clip and a hole and then, yeah, this is how the body is built. I am not crazy about this. I thought it wouldn't work, but it does, but yeah, this is the body, and it, it's just that part in the middle is pegged in so this body can do it to side to side. You don't get, you do still get a front to back too, so you have front to back, and you have that side to side. And I'm pretty sure you can hear it kind of clicking. Yeah, it clicks on that when it goes from one side to another. Front skirts. They move up individually. Side skirts can rotate up and around, whatever they're ball jointed. But it feels like uh, this one feels a little too weak. Well, both sides feels a little like they don't uh, hold in tight enough. So I might have to come go back later and uh, add in super glue, right in cement glue, whatever to hold it in place. Even though underside it's hollow, it's nice that they still try to, you know, incorporate some of the master grade technology they use to actually have the gray parts show up through the uh, the uh, armor frame parts, the green parts. The back skirts are together, but because it's ball jointed, you can separate it. Also, I'm going to admit this right now. Building this waist was the hardest thing I had to build on this thing because... It's mainly this front part here. Building the normal parts in here. And yeah, that's, there's a track for both legs to slide down together. So, building this is fine. The back part is fine. It's this front part here because this part here, you have to put in down here and then slide this on top and kind of lock it all in. That is kind of rough to do. So the hips are pegged in here and pegged in the feet. So you have the, uh, they have swivel there. And like I said, these legs kind of, and as you can see, I kind of, uh, yeah, just by moving that part when I'm not trying to. So there's the legs, they swivel down if you need them for extra clearance space, whatever, which in my case, I don't, uh, dude, I leave them up. Uh, the way these front skirts are built, they're built similar to how some of the, uh, the master grades are, so it's fine. Plus, they put detail in here on the underside, so the RE100s don't skip out on details, especially in spots where they, um, they can squeeze it in. Knees are double jointed, but you're not going to get all the double joint because the thruster here on the back of his leg is in the way, and I don't think it can come out. 
Because I think the way it's built, it's built straight into the uh, leg, so it's not going to come out. Ankles are, they're pegged in and pegged into the foot. So you got a good range of motion, got forwards, so you got a little back, you got the side to side, and you can rotate around. So yeah, overall, it gain it has all the it has good posability. And any pose that you've seen it do in the anime, it can still do it here. Um this is actually the first time we actually have a Calamity Gundam because I think in this scale, because I do know there is a conversion kit, a resin conversion kit, which means there is hope that we might see Sword Calamity in this scale. Because uh, I do remember they used the Massacrate, the old Massacrate Freedom Gundam's um, inner frame. So you'll build the Freedom's inner frame for like the body, the body and the legs, and the waist, the entire inner frame. And then the arms you'll put up on new armor parts, same thing with legs and stuff to build, and uh, shoulders. And a new backpack to build it to be Sword Calamity. And then you just have to paint it red and you basically have that kit. But that's a uh, resin dough. But yeah, overall this is a, gr a great kit. It holds up well. It looks great. It looks, it has all the colors that it has in the anime, and I honestly, the fact that everything up here is plastic and the only thing up here is stickers is up here in the head, that's amazing. I mean, sure, I wish it had a cockpit, but if they re-engineered this, they might be able to squeeze the cockpit in here. I mean, it is possible to do it. And areas like here on the chest, it's co all color separation. You got the gray back there, got that black piece back there with the yellow on top. Well, two different yellow pieces because you got this outer yellow piece is one and then these two yellow pieces on the side. Actually, no, it's just two pieces because this is this big yellow piece on the outside and then the yellow piece on the inside. And the color separation because you have this red piece and then a blue piece on this like aqua green piece on top of it. Yeah, he does well for color separation and all his detail and everything he's worth. So yeah, let's look at his accessories because he wouldn't be Calamity without his accessories to be a Calamity.